Welcome to Escape to the Country. Now, all over the UK, there are stone circles just like this one. For centuries, scholars have debated their origins and their purpose. More often than not, though, they're surrounded in mystery and intrigue. But in this case, we know all about it. So where are we and what does it all mean? Well, join me in just a few moments and I'll tell you. On today's show, we've been entrusted with helping two self-confessed townies to finally find some rural respite. Well, that's yeah. a bit special, isn't it? And though they struggle with the right vibes in one place... I'm not quite getting the feel. ..we could hit the jackpot. This is absolutely the yeah. real well. Well, today we're in Somerset, and this stone circle is in the middle of Ham Hill, a local beauty spot towards the south of the county. Now, Ham Hill itself is an Iron Age hill fort. It dates from about 800 BC, but since it was constructed, it's also become a source for this gorgeous, honey-coloured local ham stone. Now, the stone circle itself was put up at the turn of the millennium to commemorate the struggle and toil of all of those who've worked here over the last 2,000 years or so to extract this stuff. But it's the sort of story we shouldn't forget. Just imagine what would happen if, in a couple of thousand years' time, archaeologists of the future didn't know about it. They might think the circle was much older than it really is. Nestled in the southwest of England, Somerset is bordered by a number of counties, including Dorset to the southeast and Devon to the southwest, with its northern fringes meeting the Bristol Channel coast. Part of the imposing Ham Hill is now a 400 acre country park. Its underlying geology has provided the stone used to construct much of the county's distinctive architecture. Hinton St George is one village that exemplifies the beauty of this stone through its warm, ochre toned houses. But one of the county's most iconic landmarks must be the 500-foot Glastonbury Tor, which soars to the skies with the ruins of a 14th-century church standing proudly at the summit. And it's small wonder that this remarkable terrace tour has inspired spiritual speculation for generations. Now, despite the obvious gloom on the horizon over my shoulder, take it from me, Somerset, is a beautiful county, especially when the sun is shining. And when it comes to house prices, well, they make for some fairly interesting reading too. At £263,000, your average property here is a mere 5000 over the national average. Now, as with anywhere, of course, there are some places that attract a premium, not least the pretty little villages of Coombe St Nicholas and Hinton St George. But if you want a bit more bang for your buck, well, why not head south towards the Dorset border? There, around Yeovil and Ilminster, you'll certainly get a little bit more for your money. But this is certainly a place with something for everyone, including, of course, today's buyers. So let's go and meet them and find out what they're after. Retired postman Andy caught the eye of his partner Fiona in a shoe shop eight years ago. They share this three-bedroom 1960s detached house in Haywards Heath near the south coast, but are looking for a new stomping ground to call home. We're both from the outskirts of London, and when this we moved here, this was escaping came, to the country. Yeah, this was the country but then. now it, it's catching up. It's, it's almost like a, a suburb of London. It's a bit too busy now, it's, it's, and we want to take that next step to uh, to get back to the country. In the country. So the plan is to swap suburban East Sussex for the wilds of the West Country. We particularly want to go to Somerset or Somerset Dorset borders because it's an area that we've known. We've been on holiday. Mm. Um, it's quite close to friends and relatives, and uh, not too far from the sea. Yes, which is, so which a, big, is a, a big yeah. plus for me. And there's another member of their party with itchy feet. We've got a, a fairly large dog, a flat-coated retriever called Toto, who <laughs> uh, we got from a puppy. And he's a big dog, so he does. He quite enjoys, doesn't he? He walking? needs a lot of exercise, mm. so we need to find some more walks for him. We do. With four legs catered for, there are also half a dozen four-wheelers that take top priority. My passion, as it were, are old cars. Although we have a garage here, 
it's quite small, it's quite tight, um, and I'm getting to the age where I can't contort my body well enough to get into the positions I need to. Obviously, when we move, we'll, we'll have to try and accommodate them. So a bigger garage and a, a bigger drive would be, and I'd be as happy as anything. For Andy, it's classic cars, but for Fiona, it's classy cakes. I spend most of my time in the kitchen. I love baking. I bake many cakes. I've done pop-up tea rooms uh, with a friend of mine. Unfortunately, at the moment, because I've got no pop-up tea rooms, Andy seems to be eating most of the cakes. Um, <laughs> my must-haves are definitely a fairly large kitchen. The garden we've got at the moment is nice, but it's a little bit small, so I'm thinking that I would like a little bit of a larger garden, so possibly grow a few, a few vegetables, not a huge amount. Both Andy and Fiona have grown up children from previous partners, but this move represents a defining moment in their relationship. Well, we've been together for eight years now. We want to actually go somewhere on our own terms. We, we want to decide where we're going to live. Exactly, somewhere that we both want to live, and as we... opposed to just meeting and just continuing with life as it was. Yeah, and, and to incorporate retirement, so it's, it's a huge, huge mm, step for us. It is. All that's left is to find out the figure they're willing to spend on their new Somerset venture. The budget for this move would be 375, but if you found us an absolute dream house, we could probably stretch to 400. To stay connected to their families, Andy and Fiona would like good access to the A303, so we'll be concentrating our house search on the pretty villages in the south of the county, close to the border with Dorset. And it's in a peaceful Somerset spot where we're all meeting up to nail the finer details of their move. Hi, Andy. Nice Hello, to see Jules. you. Hello, Nice to meet you. Well, guys, welcome to Somerset, the land, they say, of the summer people. And although the sun is shining today, it is bitterly cold. <laughs> it's crazy. Cold, yeah. Now, you've spent quite a long time thinking about this ideal property. What's in your mind at the moment, Fiona? In my mind, roses around the door, pretty, in a nice little village, up to the village pub and general store or something like that. Not too big, but we are essentially, I think, townies, so we don't want to be too far from uh, <laughs> the main. <laughs> That's not a phrase we hear very often, we're essentially townies. Um, but I, I know what you mean, and it's right to be honest about these things. We all need amenities, after all. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, you're still keen on something, well, maybe chocolate boxy, I suppose. I am, definitely. You've obviously got quite a big extended family. How many bedrooms do you need? We've said three bedrooms. Three, four would be I mean, nice, four, but we can ideally, cope with three. But, yeah. So we don't really want a project, do we? A project, it depends, not a full restoration, but certainly we could take on some work. OK, good. Now, let's have a think about money. How much does this whole endeavour need to cost you? Max 400,000. Yeah. Right then, well, let's head off into this land of the summer people while there still is a bit of sunshine. See if we warm up. Come on. Look Thank it. Thanks. For a top budget of £400,000, Fiona and Andy are looking for a characterful property with at least three bedrooms and a large kitchen diner. Outside, they want a good-sized garden and the capacity to house Andy's classic car collection. As for the location, they're ideally after somewhere a short stroll from a shop and the local pub. And I'm hoping that our lineup of textbook country properties will appeal to them, but I'll keep them guessing as to what each house is worth until the end of the tour. Then to finish up, there's the mystery house, which might be a little less sweet, but a lot more substantial. So how do your family feel about this move from Sussex? Um, they're all very cool about it. My two children are older and, and off, off anyway. Uh, and, and your three, three are quite happy. I've also go for it, which is a nice, uh, nice situation to be in. And the whole, whole idea is that the children will come and spend perhaps more quality time with us. Well, property number one is not that far away now. And as you've probably gathered, we are heading toward Dorset. We are. Well, Fiona and Andy have said they wouldn't mind a bit of border hopping, but we're not jumping over just yet, because property number one is in the village of Rimpton, right on the Somerset-Dorset border. Rimpton is just five miles from the beautiful abbey town of Sherbourne, which has a variety of independent shops and pubs to choose from. The streets are chock full of historic interest, with architecture that spans the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries, much of which has been constructed from the distinctive mellow hamstone. 
And back in Rimpton, we have another property with vintage pedigree that we've chosen as our first house. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's a fantastic. Yeah? Chocolate boxy? It is. Certainly. So it has all the pretty charm that I think you were looking for. I think you're right. Now, in terms of um, garaging... I'm not seeing one, yes, I'm no, not seeing one. I'm afraid you're not going to. Oh. <laughs> the parking is there. But we have a solution for you. About oh. ten minutes down the road is Sparkford. And in Sparkford we have located a hangar. Ah! Oh. Now, it's a huge kind of barn, um, which you can garage your cars in, and it has some separate garages as well, which you can lock your bits and pieces away wow. in. <laughs> now, all of that is about six to eight hundred pounds a year to rent. Oh, that's not too bad at all. But it does mean they're all off-site. I won't have to look out the window at You them. don't have to no. look at them. Come on, then, let's have a <laughs> look inside. Thank you. Inside. Thatched fairly recently, within the last seven years, this Grade 2 listed attached property appears to have all the hallmarks of a classic and cosy English cottage. But there's a lot more to this place than immediately meets the eye. Right, Fiona. Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. a beautiful room, isn't it? And I love the uh, Ingunuk. Yes, yes, it's gorgeous, isn't it? But the detailing here I love. I mean, the panelling there is fabulous. Yes. Really, really nice. What a nice yeah. little feature. Yes, <laughs> these are lovely little salt stores dating from way back when. Good, so we're happy with the living room. We like the living room. Very. We like it very much. In this main reception room, there's also a staircase that leads directly into the master bedroom, which is one of two staircases. But we're going to continue our tour of the ground floor where there's two separate study areas, one of which has double patio doors out to the back garden. Up next, though, is the dining room. So here we are, feeding time <laughs> in oh, the dining room. Very, oh, this is a very good nice size room. room. Yes, another nice room. I mean, we've talked about Fiona's love of chocolate box. I mean, is this you as well, Andy? Oh, I like it, yes, yes. I mean, I'm probably the one that looks beyond into the practicalities of it all. But, yeah, my initial reaction is it looks lovely. It's got the character. I mean, it's an overused word, but it's, it's got it in, yeah. in space, isn't yes. it? You've done very well. I like it. <laughs> right, good. So far, so good. Let's have a look at the kitchen through here. Right. There you go. Yeah, this is a nice size. Nice, like the cooker. Uh, it's the way you said home. OK that, that perhaps betrays your slight disappointment uh, at the fact that it's not... Not quite my big... Farmhouse kitchen. Yeah. I mean, I like this bit where you've got the cooker. It's a question of whether you can work with this, given that you've got the dining room right next door. There's also a huge utility room behind us. So this is essentially just cooking, Yes, just cooking, for food really, preparation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. No, it's, yeah, not too bad. <laughs> not too bad, not too bad, come on. There are no compromises upstairs. Oh. Okay. No, no, look, this is the other staircase. Come and have oh, a look. Oh, I see. This look is, at this. this. This is the upstairs. Yeah. Come on, um, Oh, mind how you go. Yet yeah, more character. Oh, yes. Up here. Look at these oh, boards. These stairs are wow. challenging. <laughs> now, you've got yes. three bedrooms. Like. One double there, really nice vaulted ceiling in it. Oh, that's... yes, yes. Lovely guest room. Yes. Yeah, come on. A smaller double with exposed woodwork lies in the middle of the property, right opposite a large family bathroom. And a wooden staircase in the hallway goes up to an attic room. That leaves the rooms we've earmarked for Andy and Fiona. This effectively is like a master suite. There's a dressing room in there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I like that. Yes. There's an ensuite there for you. Oh my goodness. And then this is your bit. Wow. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, this we like, yes. Oh, it's very yes, nice. Yes, this is a lovely, yes. Yeah, deceptive, actually. And I, I love, like yeah, I love the, the idea that you can roll out of bed and... <laughs> <laughs> roll, roll, roll down the Roll down the stairs, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, let's try it. Let's yeah. go outside we'll and... we have to uh, put a guard across there, I think. <laughs> have a look at the garden. The staircase from the master bedroom winds its way downstairs and takes us back to the main sitting room, where we're headed for the garden. There's more to this than meets the eye. Vegetable patch over there, currently under plastic. Mm -hmm. Shed. The well. Yes, isn't That's... it? And the pond. And the pond. Beautiful. Yeah. So, how much do we think? Property number one. Is worth. Who's going to go first? Do go first. I'll go first. The scary bit. Um, 
I think, 395,000 within our budget just. Ready? Well, I'm mindful of the fact that there's no garage and it's attached, so I'm going to go a bit lower. I'm going to say 370. I'm hopeful, you think. <laughs> you are hopeful. <laughs> well, it's as well you are, Andy. Ah. Oh. Because this could be yours for 375. Ah. Oh. Well, first blood to Really? Me. Yeah. Go and have a look. Oh, right. Off you Thank go. You. Then. I'll catch Thanks. up with you later. OK. <laughs> there we are. Well, our property number one, our gorgeous thatch, has one word, I think, that is attached to it, and that is deceptive. This place is far bigger than any of us thought. Under budget with a guide price of £375,000, the first in our selection is a charming listed period cottage that's brimming with character. It comes with a generous sitting room, a large separate dining room and the potential for four bedrooms, including a master ensuite. And outside, the level private garden already has an established plot for growing veggies. The loft was brilliant. That wasn't what I was expecting at all. The kitchen needs a bit of thought, but I think that we could do something with that. Um, perhaps some new units. My only concern with the exterior is the fact that there's only parking for one. And I don't see how we can make parking for two, because realistically we're still going to need two cars here. The upstairs was a revelation. It was bigger than we thought it would be. As a starting point, we, li we liked it, liked it a lot. Ah, here you are. <laughs> I thought I'd find you in here. I think this is your favourite room, isn't it? Yes, we like this one. Very we much. Do. This was the perfect place to start with this property, because it really has set the scene as to what you really like, that cosy cottage yeah. feel. But I'm going to drag you away, because we've got two more to look at, including, of course, our mystery house. So, ready? Lead on. From ancient landscapes to ancient sites of worship, history surrounds you everywhere in Somerset. And nowhere more so than Bath, whose natural hot springs have cemented the city as a centre of recreation and relaxation for at least 2,000 years. In the 18th century, Bath developed into a highly fashionable spa town and still highlights some of the most impressive Georgian architecture in the country. And one of the oldest houses, with Roman origins, is also the only place in the world to find one of Bath's signature delicacies, called the Sally Lund Bun. So where better to send our cake connoisseur Fiona and her sweet tooth partner Andy? During the week, they met Jonathan Overton for a lesson in making and tasting this historic treat. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Yeah, welcome to Sally Lund. Okay. Come on in. Created by a French refugee who lived here over 300 years ago, the Sally Lund bun is similar to brioche. It's made combining eggs, butter and warm milk, but the exact ingredients are a closely guarded secret. Pull that in there. Pull Great, that. perfect. OK. That's lovely. Is that right? Yeah, no, that's fine. You can't go wrong in there. You have just lots no, of energy and you'll be fine. I can. Uh, give you'll this be fine. a bit of a mix. Yeah, give it a bit of a whisk. Yeah, well done. It's said that this classified recipe got lost in the late 1800s, but was discovered in a cupboard when the property was restored in the 1930s. Pour this in here? Yeah, absolutely. OK. Right, this is the bit where you get to be really oh, mucky. Oh, this I can be really creative yeah, now. Yeah, there you go. Right then, try not to get us all covered. Yeah, well done. Oh, oh give it a good... Oh, that's Let's fantastic. That this is like sun foil. Do you want to get in there as well? I well, can so get in there. So why don't you both have a go? Go on, fill in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> go on. How did the buns used to be baked before modern technology? Well, we've got a very special oven in the, uh, in the cellars of Sally Lund's house, which is called a faggot oven. And a faggot was a, a bunch of twigs that were tied together, uh -huh. and they would set fire to these twigs in the oven, really? and then when they'd finished burning, they would rake the embers away and then cook on the residual heat. So there wasn't quite the controllability of modern ovens. Mm. Um, so everything was a little bit more uh, time-consuming and, and a bit messy yeah. and a lot more smoky, I bet. and certainly hotter. The dough is then weighed and rolled into equal-sized balls, and after they've been left to prove, they're into the oven to bake. The bakery serves this unique light and delicate bread with a range of sweet or savoury toppings. Oh, mm. delicious. With a celebrated and unique Somerset recipe to add to Fiona's portfolio, it's time we return to the house hunt. For our next destination, we're travelling east and popping over the Somerset border to Fontmel Magna in North Dorset which takes Fiona closer to the beguiling south coast. With documented evidence of a settlement here over 1,000 years ago, the historic Fontmel Magna is a highly desirable village within an area of outstanding natural beauty. 
The quiet winding lanes are lined with a mix of old and new properties, as well as a pub and a village shop. And after our success with the thatch property this morning, we're serving up another one. Our second property of the day. There you go. Very nice, another thatch. It's another thatch, yeah. and it's also another semi-detached. Yep. Um, but this one does have a garage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, some proper off-street parking for you. Now, it's also a step forward, I think, in terms of the kitchen that's on offer, as you will see when we get inside. You're going to love it. Well, let's get out of this wispy snow, <laughs> shall we? Come on. Let's go. Built in the 1800s with attractive banded brick and flint, as well as timber cladding, this is another surprising cottage, for beyond the classic frontage, at the back of the property is a contemporary oak-framed extension given over entirely to the kitchen. There. That's what I was promising you. Wow. Oh. Yes, now this is much more like it. Yes. That's yeah. a bit special, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely, isn't it? Green oak. It's only about five years old. Oh, I do like, and I like the outlook as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The yeah. island is movable, so you could actually have a great big kitchen table in there if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is quite exceptional. Very nice. Yeah. Now, but this is what I was saying. This bit is the wow factor. This, I think, is the part of the property that really sells it. What it really needs is this touch to be carried through to the rest of it. Right. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. But I think it's all doable. Mm. Most of it's just cosmetic. And it's underfloor heating. Thank goodness. Good. <laughs> On a day like this, yeah. The modern kitchen extension has been added to the back of the original property by the main hallway. And it's inside the older part of the cottage where the layout gets more unorthodox, with a bedroom and family bathroom down on the ground floor. Then, to the far side of the hallway, are two main reception rooms. Now, this is the dining room, as it's currently set up. Cosy. It is, but nicely cosy. Yeah, there's yeah. a nice little mm. sort of feature fireplace arrangement behind us there too, which you might be able to do something else with. And we've got this dual aspect going on right through the property, which is quite mm. nice. Uh, these lovely cottagey windows. So, you know, it's certainly got the right components. I think it's just the case, as I said earlier, of joining it up yeah. with mm. what's been going on in the kitchen. And it continues through here into the living room. There. That's cosy. Yes. I mean, similar to property number one, we've got the beams, you know, lovely big ingle nook. That is a multi-fuel burner, so coal and wood uh, in there. No, I do. I like it. It's just I'm not quite getting the feel. So we had a wow. Wow in the kitchen. And now yeah. we're... Yeah, I think that's probably it. It was yeah. the wow we've in the kitchen. Wow that's... to owl. Apart from being lost for words at the start, we've now lost a crucial letter and our buyer's enthusiasm. So let's turn our attention to the bedrooms. Along with the double bedroom and the family bathroom downstairs, there are a further three bedrooms upstairs. Here again, there are two staircases, one to access one bedroom and another that leads to two, and one of those is the master. Oh, oh this is a, a sweet little room. This is what we're thinking about for you. OK, mm -hmm. this is the yeah, master. This could, yes. yeah. could work. Uh, it's the biggest, it's the squarest of the bedrooms on offer here. Right. Uh, there's some built-in storage over there, and through that little door in the corner is a loo as well. Oh, right. OK. And, of course, mm. you've got the bedroom across the hallway there, the landing, which, yep. again, might lend itself to a dressing room. It's growing on me, I think, yeah. Are you being generous? <laughs> <laughs> this house is a tough one, as it does take time to figure out both the geography and the mix of styles, but now to figure out the price. Well, this is a nice place to finish up. Almost back where we started, aren't we? Mm. We are. Pretty much. Well, I thought we'd finish off here in the kitchen because although we need to see the garden, you can see it from here and it's so cold outside, <laughs> it's a nicer place to do it from. OK, well, let's, um, let's move on then to the final stage of the process, which is, of course, what? How much? How much? Oh. Exactly. Now, you had to go first last time, so, Andy, over to you. I'm going to go for 410,000. 410,000, yeah, Fiona? I'm going to go for four fifteen. This could be yours for three, nine five. Oh, right. Oh. Oh. So just under oh, budget. Oh, pleasantly surprised. Mm. Check out that other staircase, and I'll catch up with you a little bit later on. Thank okay. You, we will. Thank you.
With an asking price of £395,000, our second property offers an intriguing mix of 19th century history with 21st century design and features a stunning kitchen breakfast room, two receptions and four bedrooms. Then outside there's the all-important garage as well as off-street parking. Oh, I think this is a female room. It is, a bit different. Oh, well, this has got... Uh... My bed. Oh, it's a bit like in the other one. The kitchen is beautiful. We really, really like the kitchen. Nice and light. Um, beautiful views over to uh, fields. Um, unfortunately, the rest of the house didn't really do a lot for me, I have to say. I appreciate the location is fabulous, but uh, the actual size of the house possibly isn't, or the way it's configured isn't the right place for us. The lounge is quirky um, and, and comfortable, but it hasn't got that um, the same sort of homely feel that we felt in the first house. Right, well, this, I think we could probably can make this into an L shape go if we go, went round to the back. Yeah. Ah, uh, you see, I knew you'd be out here. There's no escaping the cars, is there? Natural habitat. <laughs> I don't need to be interested. <laughs> well, look, that is it, I'm afraid. Our two houses for today are yeah. done. Right. It's still snowing. It is. Should we go and have some supper? That sounds, sounds like a wonderful idea. <laughs> it's the second day of our property search, and with a budget of £400,000, we're helping Anne in Fiona to swap a suburban setting in an East Sussex town for the serenity of Somerset. Still to come, a sight for sore eyes in the mystery house. Oh, those Look. views are to die for. And I'll be trying some DIY, medieval style. I don't think I'm going to do very well here, am I? Well, as we head off into our final day of house hunting, it is perhaps worth sparing a thought as to what happened yesterday. It certainly bears out the old adage that some you win and some you lose. Property number one was most definitely a winner, but property two, I think, struggled to convince both Andy and Fiona that it was the house for them. So what have we got for our final offering, our mystery property? Our last stop takes us over towards the southwestern portion of Somerset, where we're destined for the small hamlet of Sticklepath within the shadow of the Blackdown Hills. And we're making an impromptu visit into the heart of the Blackdowns to give Andy and Fiona a little taste of what's on offer. It's amazing up here, isn't it? It's lovely. It's this overnight snow has made it rather pretty. Like the enchanted forest. It's beautiful. <laughs> this is what I wanted you to see. My goodness. Oh, that's stunning. It's Absolutely really special. Stunning. Really special. The hills themselves are an area of outstanding natural beauty, and they cover about 370-odd square kilometres. It's a really? huge area. It's a massive area. And, you know, with the dog and walking and having somewhere to just... Oh, it'll just be... This is yeah, I think that ideal. Would... The mystery house is down there. Oh. Really looking forward to it. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Happy? Very. Very. Despite the overnight <laughs> snow. <laughs> Come on. We continue our journey towards the edge of the Blackdown Hills on the outskirts of Coombe St Nicholas, which is a sleepy village that benefits from a convenience store with post office and a pub featuring live music. But our mystery house isn't smack bang in the middle of the village as our buyers wanted. Instead, we're going right off the beaten track into the quiet countryside hamlet of Sticklepath, a good 15 minutes walk away. This is our mystery property. What do you reckon? Looks nice from the outside. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> Looks as though it's got beautiful views as well. It's got amazing views, and the further up the garden you get, the better they become. Uh, all in all, it's about an acre. Oh. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yes. It's bigger than the last garden. garden, yeah. Yeah, it's by far the biggest space we've been able to find you. Um, and I suppose similarly to our first two properties, it was originally two cottages. I think it's a really interesting one, this. Okay. And loads of space for you. Can we go and have a look? You yeah. certainly can. <laughs> yeah, come on. Then. You need to see this one. Set in an elevated position, this sprawling mystery property gives our buyers an alternative style to the traditional chocolate box they requested. But that's not to say this one is without character. So let's see what Andy and Fiona make of this design starting at the back of the house and straight into the kitchen. Here we are. Right. Come on in, Fiona. Oh, I don't even think I need to see inside. Really? 
I'm just blown just away by the outside. outside and the garden. Yeah. This is nice. She's and as you can see, it's nice all very kitchen. much, you know, done. You know, mm. very easy, just Could ready, straight to, in. ready to move into, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, lovely. Good. Bit more space then? Come this way. Now this, I think, is a real winner. <laughs> oh, look. This is huge. Yeah? This is lovely. Oh, my God, look. Oh, now that's what you call an ingle nook, isn't it? Come on over. Oh. oh wow. It's, this is absolutely yeah. the real wow, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Well, I think our mystery house is pressing a few buttons, isn't it? I think it's pressing all the buttons <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> well, let's see if we can press a few more. Yeah. Come this way. Down on the ground floor, there's also a large utility and storage room, as well as a contemporary shower room. But we're heading up to the first floor, where there's the perfect place to soak up the rural surroundings. Right, up here, we've got you this conservatory, which is roasting. Feel how warm it is. <laughs> Oh, those Look. views are to die for, aren't they? Aren't they, just? Fantastic. Just see us sitting here, cup of coffee. Oh. Lovely. As long as those pictures are emerging, I think that's mm. the thing that really informs me. That I'm never going to get any work done on the car. <laughs> I'm just going to be sitting here with, <laughs> drinking endless cups of coffee. But it informs me that a house is working for people. Oh. Is it, yes. And that's great. If we can tear them both away from the views, the bedrooms are all on this level too. A bright, fully tiled family bathroom serves four bedrooms in total. There are two doubles, one of which is being used as a study. And then there's a smaller single bedroom. And that just leaves the master. And then finally, this one. Oh, this is nice. It oh, this is, is great. It's nice. again, it's a dual yeah. aspect. Dual aspect, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is lovely. Drapes. That's lovely. I mean, it's not on suites, but then you've got that really generous family bathroom. And you've got the shower room. And the shower room downstairs. And the shower room downstairs. Yeah, which is fine, mm. absolutely fine. It's got far more of a cottagey feel up here, actually. It's really cosy. And waking up with that view out there, I think really sweet, actually. This is yeah. definitely a winner. <laughs> Good. It's a winner. Hooray. <laughs> Have we got a sale, I wonder? Wow. Have we got some buyers? Oh, I'm a bit concerned about the price. Well, mm. you should yeah. be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. go outside and take in that garden and talk about the money, okay. shall we? OK, thanks. Come on, then. Outside, the acre of grounds is mostly laid to lawn across various levels, with a deck terrace and a heated swimming pool. What's more, there's a large garage with off-street parking, and the whole plot is enveloped by lush Somerset countryside. <laughs> yes, there we are. More stunning views. More stunning views. That's yes, yet another different view, isn't it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? So how much, then, is our mystery house on the market for? I think it's going to be above budget. And as I've got the last two wrong, I'm going to go for 425000 425 I was going to say that. I think, looking at it and looking at what we're getting, probably even more, I'm going to go for 430000 430 it was on the market at £475,000. Mm. But it's not anymore. <laughs> this is now on the market for £399,950. Under budget. <laughs> By 50 quid. God. <laughs> Where do we sign? Where do we sign? <laughs> I think this is a real steal, actually, for this what you is, want. Yeah. Absolutely. No, this is a stunner, yeah. and uh, a stunner at the price as well. This is our absolutely ideal yeah. house. Thanks. It really is. Thank Brilliant. you so You've... much for finding it. Well, now you're on with the price and feeling suitably inspired, you can go and have another look around. But I suggest you start up there... Up at that five-barred gate and yes. see if you can find yourself a bit of parking. Yes, that's where I want to go. Come on, then. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Off you go. On the market just shy of £400,000, the detached mystery house is the biggest property in our selection, but still within budget. It comes with a kitchen breakfast room, a large lounge diner and four bedrooms. There's also the added bonus of a conservatory overlooking the grounds that extend to an acre, and it's all surrounded with unspoilt rural views. Absolutely. Can't tell you. Blown away by it. It's still got a chocolate box appeal, but without the thatch, and more open downstairs, but the upstairs is, has definitely got a cottagey feel, which we like very much. 
But the views are the thing that's really sold it to me. Absolutely fantastic, beautiful. I thought the house was going to be way out of our reach. I thought it was going to be far, far over budget. I rather hoped it wouldn't be too far, but to get it under budget, that just took my breath away, absolutely. Um, as far as I'm concerned, when can we move in? Well, considering we started this morning in the snow, I am loving this sunshine. This is a bit more like it, isn't Beautiful. it? Beautiful. With this in the house, what could be better? It's a perfect combination, mm, isn't it? It is. But I am going to have to whisk you away because there's another viewing here in half an hour. We'd better be quick. If you want this, you better yeah. start thinking. <laughs> yeah. That signals the end of our house search for Andy and Fiona. But whatever your wish list or your finances, Somerset has a whole host of homes to choose from. This four bedroom detached cottage built of local hamstone is situated in the popular village of Norton Subhamden. With a guide price of £595,000, there's a real opportunity for any buyer to put their stamp on the accommodation, which includes a handsome dining room and a dual aspect master bedroom. Or for offers in the region of £475,000, how about this three bedroom barn conversion in Lower Odcombe with outstanding countryside views? It features a master bedroom with exposed stonework and a high spec country kitchen. Finally, this cosy Grade 2 listed thatch cottage in Winsham comes with three bedrooms, an inviting sitting room with Inglemook fireplace, and the ideal garden for those with a self sufficient lifestyle in mind. A steal at £285,000. Despite Somerset's tranquil landscape, it was the backdrop for the 1685 Bloody Assizes, in which over 100 locals were sentenced to death by the notorious Judge Jeffreys, who resided here at Taunton Castle. Within the curtilage of the building is the Museum of Somerset and the once derelict Castle House, one of the town's few surviving 15th century properties that has never been open to the public. But now, in the hands of a charity-run project, work is underway to restore Castle House to its former glory. Russell. Hello, Jules. Hello, sir. Nice to see you. And you. Russell Lilford from the Somerset Buildings Preservation Trust is overseeing the restoration of this unique medieval building. Now, I know it's associated with Judge Jeffreys, a man who has gone down in infamy <laughs> in the history books. What were the assizes all about? What happened to start them? Well, we go back in history, 300 years to the Battle of Sedgemoor, the last battle fought on English soil between the Duke of Monmouth and the King's forces. After the battle, which the Duke lost, the prisoners were rounded up, brought to Taunton and tried by Judge Jeffreys. I mean, it's a beautiful room, don't get me wrong, oh. but the idea that a man like that, who after a hard day's work committing people to be hung, drawn and quartered, would relax in here, <laughs> is a bit spooky. Yeah, well, people like spooky, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's certainly got atmosphere, there's no question about it. Before the trust came to the rescue, this part of the castle was in such a poor state of repair that it was placed on the English Heritage at Risk Register. And what's this little feature down here? Well, this is absolutely fascinating, Jules. It was really an architectural feature which the Normans used to keep the evil spirits out of churches, so it was in the church doorway. Restoration of this room is near completion, but there's still a lot more work to do at the hands of skilled craftsmen like Dean Horsey. This is the real thing, isn't it? This is lath and plastering, as it was traditionally done, yeah. So a few bits of hair in there, too. That's goat's hair. Is it goat's hair? Yeah. So this really is the, the real the risk, stuff. Yeah, as it would have been. Yeah. yeah. Can I have a go? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Can yeah. I really have a go? On, please do. I'd love to try it. It's going to be the challenge. A lot of it is patience. Have a go. Here you go. I don't think I'm going to do very well here, am I? You've got so <laughs> much to do, I'm not sure I'm helping. Well, no, I'm not really. <laughs> but I am enjoying, Keep I am going. enjoying Keep the going. practice. There are no quick fixes for a project like this, and sticking firmly to the ethos of repair, not replace, traditional methods are being used throughout. But it's hoped that the full restoration will soon be finished, with plans afoot to incorporate the ground floor rooms into the neighbouring museum. Well, this is a lovely view of the exterior, Russell. It certainly is. It's an extraordinary place. I mean, you've had to unpack so much about this building to understand it and the story goes on it does indeed and what about those rooms upstairs that well the rooms upstairs will generate enough income to maintain the building they're going to be let to the vivat trust who are a charitable organization that let historic houses to the public so you can actually stay in judge jeffrey's bedroom absolutely <laughs> that really is spooky <laughs> castle house has had quite a role to play in the story of taunton's history 
but it's great to know that that legacy is now in safe hands and will be preserved for future generations. Now, Andy and Fiona are up there somewhere having a cup of tea and a well-earned rest as they discuss everything that we've shown them this week. So have we managed to find them their dream home of the future? Well, on this occasion, I think we might have done. There's a lot of laughter and smiles. That's a good sign. How are we? We're very well. Very well, thank you. Good. Oh, and there's coffee too. Even better. Well, we have explored quite a lot over the last few days, haven't we? And not just the local area and its housing stock, we've also explored what's going on in your minds as to what the future may hold. You certainly have done that. We started off with a, a need to find you a lovely home and, of course, somewhere for your car collection. How have we done? I think the first house, I loved the house, as you said. Roses around the door, thatch. Um, I think for you it was a bit more difficult. Yeah, I always had issues with the fact that there was no garage and the parking outside was very tight. We also knew, of course, that it wasn't just Somerset that was of interest. You were quite happy to go into Dorset. Mm -hmm. And so there we went for our second property uh, with that amazing kitchen. It was beautiful, yes. Yes, unfortunately, the kitchen just overshadowed everything else in the house. Um, the rest of the house basically couldn't live up to the kitchen. Yeah. Well, I have to confess, as we started out this morning on the snow-covered Blackdown Hills, I was a little bit apprehensive as to what you would make of our mystery house, but... It was all smiles, wasn't it? The sun came out. Yeah, it just yeah. blew us away. We couldn't believe that that was the one house and that it was within our budget. <laughs> Definitely within our budget. I mean, that's just amazing. So what is it about our mystery house that you have fallen in love with? Absolutely everything about it. The house is, is good for us, works well for us, I think. The garden was gorgeous and those views just unbelievable. Mm. And to have a double garage as well, that, <laughs> so that really did put the tin hat on it. So what happens next? I definitely want to go and see it again. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's a real contender. Thank well, you so much yeah. for finding it for us. That is our pleasure. I'm going to keep everything crossed for you. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thanks. Now, throughout this programme, you may well have caught a glimpse of this wonderful building behind me. It is, in fact, Dillington House. Back in the 1780s, it was home to Lord North. He was then Prime Minister, clearly a man used to making a difficult decision or two, and that, of course, is what we've been doing this week during our house hunt. He was a man who loved Somerset, and this was his escape to the country. And now, with any luck, we've managed to find Fiona and Andy their very own too. If only you could have that for £400,000. Fiona and Andy were completely won over by our mystery house and are desperately waiting for that elusive buyer for their own home so they can finally make their much-longed-for move to Somerset. 